welcome. I'm so glad you joined me. We're going to talk in this segment about uh, another model for understanding and communicating information about the three-dimensional structure of molecules. Uh, in a previous video, we covered valence shell electron pair repulsion. In this video, what we're going to be looking at is valence bond theory or hybridization. So what this theory the main premise of this theory is that we take atomic orbitals, region and space where you're likely to find an electron around an atom. So we're going to take atomic orbitals and we're going to hybridize them or I like to think of it as a mathematical mixing of this because orbitals after all are at their heart are calculation. They're a wave function, our atomic orbitals. A, a wave function squared is a region in space where, where there's a 90% probability of finding an electron with a given energy. Say that a zillion times fast. So what we're going to do is take that atomic orbital space and we're going to make molecular orbitals. So for every, we have to have a central atom and for every peripheral atom, we have a bond, right? So we need a region in space to describe those electrons between the two atoms. And that's called a molecular orbital. We also would need a region in space to define where we would find a non-bonded pair. Now, this model is not dealing with pi bonds. Pi bond is the second and third bond formed. We're only talking about sigma bonds. Sigma bonds are the first bond formed and their electron density is directly between the two atoms. So in this case, we would need three regions in space. So one, two, three regions in space to describe that. So let's take a look. If we add B plus E, B is my symbol for peripheral atoms. So that's my peripheral atoms or groups of atoms. E is for my non-bonded pairs of electrons on a center. So if that's two, I need two molecular orbitals. So I'm going to hybridize two atomic orbitals. So let's take an S, and then we're going to be looking at three Ps. We are not going to go into the Ds. That's a model that's kind of falling out of favor. But organic chemists are for a long, long time, if not forever, going to be using this for carbons. So I need to take two of these. So one, two, and what I'm going to make, right, B plus E was two, so I'm going to take two atomic, and I'm going to make two equal energy. Notice there's an energy gap here. These are equal in energy, and we're going to call them sp hybrid, hybrids. So I have two sp hybrids. I'm going to show you a great website on this in just a minute. Now, if B plus E is three, I need three molecular orbitals. My number of atomic orbitals is three. We're going to hybridize one atomic for every molecular we need. So this time we have to add another P. In this case, what we're going to be looking at are now three equal energy, equal bonds. This model helps explain why bonds are equivalent around a center. I saw that as an AP question. Why are these bonds equivalent around the center? And it's because of hybridization. So we do this, we need two of the P's, so we use a superscript. So we're going to have three sp2 hybridized orbitals. So we would say this is sp2 hybridized. Four and four. Now we'll need an s, a p, and a p, and a p. We need all three. So it would be sp3 hybridized. Okay, let's take a look 
at what we would see. I want to show you one of my very, very, very favorite, favorite website. Um, this website shows atomic orbitals and they're very, very cool. It's the winter group. I usually just Google winter orbitals and I can find this site and it's really neat. You can see, for example, let me just show you because it's just so cool. Um, I want to encourage you to look. This would be the 6G orbitals. Aren't they awesome? I just love that. Well, what we're talking today is about hybrid orbitals. So let's take a look. So remember, if we had um, B plus E was equal to 2, we would take an S and a P, and we're going to make two SP hybrids. So here's an SP and here's an SP and we end up with a center and this would be an atom and this would be an atom and we get a linear molecule with 180 degrees. Okay, Just like you would see, you know, Vesper, of course it's got to agree with Vesper um, or one of them is wrong. So, so now we have SP2 and so we see we had to take an S, a P, and a P, and we get three SP2 hybrids. And when we put them together around that center there, let me see if I can find a better color for you, right around that center there, and then we would either have a peripheral atom or a non-bonded pair, okay, so if this was A, B, 3, it's trigonal planar. And if it was A, B, 2, E, it would be angular or V-shaped. And then finally, let me show you the SP3. So we would have the four SP3s. So this is the SP3 example, and you would put them together around a center, and I'll be honest, it's very hard to see, but that's a tetrahedron. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a general idea. Let me look at, let me show you the types of problems that you would come across with this. All right, so let's take a look at this molecule here. I'm going to zoom in and focus on it a little bit. And this is the type of thing organic chemists are going to do a lot of. We're going to look around each carbon. So if I look around that carbon, I have one, two, three, four things hanging off of it. So that would be like an AB4 structure. Vesper would tell us it's tetrahedral. Whoops, can't spell. Tetrahedral. Okay, and if B plus E is 4, that means I need S, P, P, P. This carbon is SP3 hybridized, as is this other one. They're identical. Okay, now let's look at the center carbon. It's a little different. That center carbon has one, two, three things around it. So that's an AB3 structure, so B plus E is 3, so I'd need an S, a P, and a P, so this one is SP2 hybridized. Okay, hope that helped. Take care and good luck with chemistry.